Hello and welcome back to another episode of Beyond the To-Do List, the show where we talk to the people behind the productivity. I'm Eric Fisher, and this week I am talking with a guest who has been on this show now four times, none other than Michael Hyatt himself. Michael is here to talk about his new book that I've been waiting for for a long time called Living Forward, A Proven Plan to Stop Drifting and Get the Life You Want. He co-authored it with Daniel Harkavy, and we're going to talk about some of the interesting things that come out of the collaboration between the two of them and how they did that, as well as the essence of that book and honestly, the essence of this podcast. It kind of hit me as I was talking to Michael that, again, the theme behind the title of this show, Beyond the To-Do List, has so much to do with thinking at a macro level about all the different tasks that you have and not getting lost in the weeds of those tasks, but looking at it from a macro level, from the highest level possible, 30,000 foot view, et cetera, and then backwards working through down to the point of what then your tasks should be. And this is just an awesome conversation. I always love being able to get to talk to, to Michael. Before we get into that conversation, I want to say thank you again to Nosby for supporting this episode of Beyond the To-Do List. Nosby is a tool that I use and more than 300,000 other busy people use to take care of those tasks I was just talking about. Having that one digital place on your desktop, on your laptop, on your phone, your tablet, even your Apple Watch, that you can process through those tasks that belong to those projects, that belong to that life plan, is essential for productivity. Nosby connects with not only all those different devices, but it also connects to your Evernote, your Dropbox, your Google Drive. And not only that, but you can get a free 30-day pro trial from Nosby by going to nosby.com slash to do. And with a 30-day pro trial, you get a second account for your partner included free. That way you don't have to suddenly try to onboard somebody else by getting that second account free. That means that then you have that partner, that accountability, that VA, that assistant that will work with you on those tasks to get those projects done and succeed. Again, you can get that 30-day free trial by going over to nosby.com slash to do. That's N-O-Z-B-E dot com slash T-O-D-O. Now let's jump in and listen to this conversation with Michael Hyatt. It is once again my privilege to welcome back Michael Hyatt to the show. Michael, welcome back. Thanks, Eric. Always great to be with you. This is your fourth time on this show. Really? Yeah. You were you were, and you were episode number four to be in more uh you know succinctly about it. But then you came back uh let's see, two other times and we talked about goals, and I can't believe we talked about it two different times and didn't do any overlap. So that was great. But you're, you're continuing in the same vein of life planning and honestly just getting the most out of life and being yes. strategic about it, not just being, you know, emotional and inspirational about it. Although there is that element to that, but you're very, you're being very practical and strategic about it. And that's what I love. You're well, going you. you're going macro <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> tasks and projects. You're 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 thinking big picture and you know whole life. So well the thing it. that I find Eric is so many people lack fundamental clarity about their lives and what it all means and where it's going and I always feel like you know if I can help people get there get clarity about their life what they want out of life and get them uh some momentum in that direction then I've I've done my work. Yeah, the, you you never fail to uh, to deliver when it comes to that for sure. Thank so you. that's why I was excited to see that you were working on a new book. And in fact, before we get into the book at all, I want to ask a couple of questions about the process of creating the book. Because sure. Yeah. I know for a fact. Well, and and if it wasn't this, correct me. But didn't you go away for a while to work on this? Yes, I did. Um, a couple of years ago, actually, I went to a friend's cabin in the Rockies, deep in the Rockies, kind of in the wilderness. And so for 30 days, Gail and I were out there and I wrote every single day. I had the whole thing mapped out how many words I had to do a day to get done. Some days I exceeded that. A lot of days I didn't exceed it. 
But uh, I managed to get the book written, plus do a lot of fly fishing and hiking, and it was awesome. That's a unique situation, and I think there's going to be maybe a reverberation of that that comes back later as we talk about what the book is and and, and part of the implementation. And you may be know where I'm hinting at here, but uh, I do when it takes to implement a life plan or create one, actually, I should say, and then start implementing. Yep. Um, you also did something different this time around as well, where you collaborated. So obviously your writing partner was not there with you. And yet this book has two names on it. Yeah. So my job was to do the first draft. I, I wrote this ebook called Creating Your Personal Life Plan about five years ago. That was uh, a result of a process that I had learned from my executive coach, Daniel Harkavy, who's my co-author on this book. He was my executive coach for about a decade, became one of my dearest, closest friends. And that little ebook that I wrote, which I used as an email incentive, over 200,000 people downloaded that. So I said to Daniel, I said, buddy, we need to do a, a real book on this. I said, I think there's serious demand in the marketplace. There's so much stuff I didn't cover in the ebook that needs to be covered in the book. And so he said, game on, let's do it. So my job was when I was out in the wilderness, I wrote the first draft. So I did kind of the brain dump and polished it as well as I could. Then I gave it to Daniel who inserted all of his stories because he has a very different business than I do. You know, my business is a platform-based business where I talk to tens of thousands of people on my blog and in my podcast. His business is an executive coaching business where he deals with Fortune 500 companies, executives, and has coached thousands of them and worked with them side by side to develop life plans and business visions and all the rest. So it was just, to me, it was the perfect partnership. We each brought something different to the table. And the thing that was valuable from his perspective was all of his client stories. Oh, so it sounds like you guys really leaned in on your strengths when it came to creating this. Yeah, we did. And, you know, we just we just worked to, uh, together amazingly well. You know, that's always a risky thing when you try to collaborate with somebody on something. But uh, I have to say now that we've gone through the process, the editing process, the getting published process, all of that. And now, of course, we're in the in the middle of the marketing process, you know, he's just been a phenomenal partner. He's one of those guys that gives more than he receives. And I'm grateful. Yeah. Well, it's really encouraging to me to hear that you decided to do a deeper dive on that ebook because I was one of the many people who'd followed you for a long time and had obviously grabbed that and looked through it and tried to apply it in different ways and just knew that when you were going to tackle this again, you were going to go much further in and, you know, d deeper up and deeper in as they, as they talk about in Chronicles of Narnia. And, um, I just knew how much further could you go? That, that was my question. And, and, and so then when I was looking through the book, I'm like, oh, okay, uh, this, is, this is great. This is, this is really good. I mean, I'm going to take a day away and like reread it. That's how important this is. Awesome. Well, thank you for doing that. You know, the thing that I wanted to do with this book is, is we wanted it to be a, a, a fuller, more clear expression of the process of how to write a life plan. We want to give people the motivation. And most importantly, we want to give them the how-to of how to do it. And it only takes a day. But we also wanted the book to not be any longer than it needed to be. Now, my whole career, as you know, has been in the book publishing industry. So I know how easy it is for authors and for publishers to take what should have been an essay and bulk it up into a book. And I didn't want that. I wanted people to, to traverse the shortest distance between them and getting a life plan that they could put into operation and that would make a transformational difference in their life. So this is not a long book. You know, it's, uh, in fact, I just got the audio book that Daniel and I read, Alternating Chapters. And if you listen to it at one time speed, I mean, who does that anymore? <laughs> but if you listen to it at one time speed, you can listen to the entire book in four hours. Yeah. So it's not a long book, but it's just as long as I think it needed to be. We cut a lot out after the first draft because we wanted to, to distill it to the essence. And I think, you know, people have to be the judge, but I think we got there. Yeah. What initially drew you to this topic? Like what kind of symptoms of, well, you, I guess you know where I'm going, the drift, did you maybe see in other people's lives or your own life? And then, you know, then when you went and did the coaching, like what caused you to really hone in on, hey, this is a pain point for a lot of people? Yeah, well, I'll tell you uh, two stories here that I think illustrate this concept of the drift. And if this story has a villain, it's the drift. And that's when, you know, you're just drifting without a rudder and you're not quite sure where you're going. So it happened like this for me. Back in the year 2000, I suddenly found myself 
being promoted at Thomas Nelson Publishers, taking over one of the divisions there, which at that point we had 14 different book divisions, and that book division was dead last on every significant financial metric. So it was really in trouble. And that was a great thing for me because I couldn't screw it up. I could only make it better. But I really hunkered down, and I had told the CEO that it would take us three years to turn it around. And in point of fact, in 18 months, we were able to go from number 14 to number one. So that was the good news. The bad news is that my team and I were working nonstop, you know, 12 hour days, weekends. I had found myself in the ER three different times thinking I was having a heart attack. And the final time, my cardiologist just confronted me and he said, Tell me what's going on in your life. So I said, Well, you know, I used to eat pretty well, but I really haven't been eating that well. I'm doing a ton of traveling. You know, I'm on the road. I'm not sleeping very well. And, you know, I got a lot of stress in my life and I'm basically not exercising at all. And so he listened and he was very empathetic and he said, look, I'm just going to give you a piece of advice. He said, the deal is if something doesn't change, you're going to be in the ER again, but this time it's going to be for real. And he said, you can fix it now or you can fix it later. And it's a lot less expensive to fix it now. So I was, um, I didn't know where to turn really, but John Maxwell had become a friend because he was an author that I had published a number of books with at Thomas Nelson. We were his publisher at the time. So I asked John, I said, John, I need an executive coach. And he said, well, let me tell you the best guy I know. In fact, um, the two of us are going to be speaking together in Nashville in about 30 days. Why don't you come on out and I'll introduce you. And that was Daniel Harkavy. So one of the very first things that Daniel did to me, listened to my story, and then he put me through a process where I created my very first life plan. Now, when we talk a life plan, we're not talking about something that's like a strategic plan for a business. It's a big, thick binder and takes you months to create, and then you put on the shelf and never look at it again. Don't tell me how I know this happens in corporate <laughs> corporations. But it was just a simple 8 to 12-page document. That's what we advocate in the book. And I was able to create it in one single day, really in one single sitting. And it changed everything, not immediately, but it really changed the direction of my life. Because suddenly now, I had a mechanism for filtering out the things that I could say yes to, the things I needed to say no to. I, I was suddenly clear about the destination that I wanted to reach in each of the major areas of my life. And I was thinking holistically about my life. You know, just being successful at business is not enough. You know, I wanted to have the best, be in the best health I could be in. In addition to that, I wanted to have a great marriage. And I wanted to, you know, really see my career continue to improve and my financial situation and all that. So all that got considered in the life plan. And that for me was like putting the rudder back on a boat. And it's been awesome. And I've done that consistently since Daniel taught me that whole process back in 2000. And it's been uh, really the one thing, my sort of my North Star, the thing that keeps me on track, that keep, keeps me moving in the right direction so that I don't get it to the end of my life. And I realize that I've ended up at destinations I would not have chosen and look back with regrets. So the rudder, it's perspective, like where you are, where you want to go, and what you have to do to work towards that destination. Yes, it's, it's kind of direction. And if I could just tell you another quick story, I, yeah. I do tell, tell this in the book. But um, Gail and I had been married for about 10 years, and we decided to celebrate and go to Hawaii. The only problem was we were pretty much broke. But we took all of our airline miles and everything else. We got there, and we didn't have any money for a lot of entertainment, but we noticed that the hotel was offering free scuba lessons, and we could rent the equipment for about $10 for the entire week. So we said, hey, that's a price we can afford. So we went to the swimming pool. They taught us all the basics. Then they went out, we went out onto the reef, and we were blown away. It was like swimming in an aquarium. So we said, this is fantastic. So next day, we decided to go out on our own. We went to the lagoon next to the hotel. It was about 6 o'clock in the morning. The water was crystal clear. It was totally calm. Uh, there wasn't another soul out there. And we got our snorkeling gear on and started swimming around in that lagoon. And, man, it was just absolutely mesmerizing. All the fish the reef itself, you know, all the stuff that we were seeing. Again, it was like an aquarium. But what we didn't know, because we were distracted by everything we were watching, is that we had we'd become caught in a riptide, and it pulled us way out from the shore. I don't know how far it was, but when I looked off into the distance, when I finally pulled my head up, the hotel looked like a toy in the distance. And Gail pulled her head up, and she gasped, and she said, what are we going to do? 
And we had this boogie board, and we just started swimming like crazy for the shore. It took us about 45 minutes, maybe an hour to get there. And we pulled ourselves up on the beach, and we're just exhausted. We collapsed. And for me, that has become just this rich metaphor for how most people live life. They get distracted. It's not intentional. They're just distracted by all that's going on. They're dealing with one thing at a time, not realizing that there is a current, there is a a riptide, and they're getting carried to destinations they would not have chosen if they'd been conscious about it. And for some people, that ends in failing health or a heart attack or even death. Or other people, it ends in uh, a marriage where they've lost their intimacy and their connection or they end up divorced. Or for other people, they get stalled out in their career or they never launched that business they always wanted to launch. Or whatever it is, they're just drifting. And to me, the corrective, to go back to the first metaphor, is to have a rudder, to be intentional, to be focused, to be aware of where you are so that you don't lose your place um, and, and get you know, swept out to sea. To play devil's advocate for a moment, a lot of people, they hear the words plan or even life plan, and they think about that business binder you were talking about a second yeah. ago. And they think that's not what my life is. My life is not – my life is is actual living. It's It's living and breathing. It's not facts and figures. They feel like – a plan is a blueprint and you know you can't deviate from it or you can't you know it, it in other words it feels too structured for a lot of creative types out there and that's not what a life plan is yeah it's really not you know what a life plan is is really three things it's the answer to three really important questions and the first question is how do i want to be remembered you know because we get to the end of our days and eventually all of us are going to die And so we take people there. We take them through an exercise where they contemplate their own funeral and ask, okay, when it's all over, you know, when all the pieces go back in the box, what are people going to say about us? How are we going to be remembered by the people we love the most and would like to have influence over? So that's that's the first exercise and the first part of the life plan. The second question is, what's important to you? Now, most of us know what's important to our boss. We know what's important to our spouse. We may know what's important to our parents or the culture at large. But for us to stop and consider, you know what? I have agency here. Um, I've got the responsibility to choose my priorities for myself and stop letting other people dictate what those should be. So going through that exercise of, you know, what are the major categories of my life and how do they sort of rank? And, you know, life uh, doesn't always unfold like that. But it really helps you when push comes to shove to make a decision that's a priority-based decision so that you don't get to the end of your days with regret. And then the third question is, how do I get from here to there? And this we call an action plan, but this is where it starts getting fun because you take each of these different compartments of your life or domains of your life and you begin to, to envision what do I want this to look like in the distant future? You know, what do I... Where do I want my finances to be? Where do I want my uh, health to be? Where do I want my marriage to be? And you craft basically a vision of that that's written in the present tense. And then you ask yourself, okay, in relationship to that vision for that part of my life, where am I today? And what are some initial steps? We don't advocate detailed planning. That's why this isn't a big binder. But what are some initial steps that are going to get me on the path to that destination that I've now envisioned? I love that you go there with these three things because as I was reading it, it it resonated deeply. And I'll tell you why. For about the past two years now, uh, I've been seeing a counselor and Mm. we got to the place in our conversations where he asked me, you know, about these questions of legacy and, you know, what will they say about you? What do you want them to say about you even when you have died, your family, your friends, even people that didn't know you? And when we were talking through that process of w- what does that look like? What does that mean? It really all came down to character traits for me. Mm-hmm. And suddenly it was like this non vague, uh, you know, well, I hope people, you know, liked me and this and that. Like, no, it came down to what are the character traits? And then what are the ways that you embody those character traits starting now forward? Yes, so. absolutely. Yeah, I think character is the crux of it. And this book is really not so much about doing as it is about being. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just, it's an important thing to remind ourselves of, you know, is that we were made to be human beings, not human doings. And the doing that we do flows out of who we are and the being that we have. 
Yeah, that, that's exactly it. And that's why, I, you know, when we first started talking and having this conversation, I, I, I alluded to this whole, you're thinking on a macro level instead of a micro level. We get lost sometimes, well, most of the time, <laughs> when we look at things on a micro level of, I have to, you know, a, a, a to-do list, hence the name of the show, Beyond the To-Do List. Imagine that. Yes. That that really is what I was alluding to. And I remember when I told you the name of the show, you were like, oh, that's a great name for a show. <laughs> Way that's back a great then. name. And it, it was alluded to. I was alluding to this the whole time. It's just that when you get lost in the weeds of the tasks, you lose perspective. And yes. only by going to this macro level that this show has always been about, that you're talking about in this book, can you then drill down and do those individual tasks with purpose and intention? Because then you're checking off the right things and you've done the homework to make sure that's the case. Yeah, and it's and it gets really messy when you try to do it the reverse. You know, when you're doing the tasks and hope that somehow they fit into a pattern that all leads to a meaningful life, that's a pretty risky proposition. You know, that's like starting out on a journey without having a roadmap and not quite sure where you're going to end up. It might be adventuresome at times, but it's not going to be effective in terms of getting you to the destination. And I like to think of this, Eric, the life planning process is kind of the 30,000 foot view of your life. It's the most expansive horizon of all. You know, annual goal setting, which, you know, I advocate with my five days to your best year ever program, you know, that's more like the 10,000 foot view. Mm -hmm. And then I believe and practice in my company quarterly planning. And then it comes down to the daily planning. But in each case, we're getting closer to the ground, but we're losing perspective. And the great thing about a 30,000 foot view is you can see where this is going. You know, you see where the highway is leading. One year I was um, traveling in Ireland and um, I was... I mentioned John Maxwell either earlier. I was on a trip with him and we were just kind of over there having fun. And um, we decided to go golfing and John is kind of crazy like this. And so he got a helicopter to pick us up. There were several of us on this trip to go golfing and we flew about a thousand feet over the uh, Irish countryside on our way to this amazing golf course that was in the south of Ireland. And the crazy thing about it was, you know, when you're just at that height, you can really see stuff that you can't see when you're, you know, on a highway just going through the trees and don't have any sense of perspective. But we could see where all the roads go. We could see where the coast was. And when you're at 30,000 feet, you know, you can even see more of that sense of perspective. But it's important to poke our heads above the cloud and occasionally ask ourselves the question, where is all this activity that makes up my life? Where is it leading? Is it going somewhere I really want to go? Yeah. Speaking of trips, I know that one of the things, once you've done a number of the, the homework pieces that you talk through in creating the plan, is to get away for a day. Let's expand on that a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, I was actually advocating when we were writing the book to Daniel, I said, you know, well, maybe people could break this up if it's too hard to get away for a day. For a day. And of course, I'd always practice, do it all in one day. And that's what Daniel taught me. And he said, no, he said, absolutely not. He said, it's critically important. Because you've got to be able to pull away and do a deep dive on your life. And when you think about how much time people spend buying a car, I think like an average people spend like, you know, five hours doing the research before they ever hit a car dealership, then all the time negotiating the car and test driving and all that stuff. Or when people plan a wedding, you know, I've got five daughters and four of them are married now. So I've been through that cycle of weddings and, you know, it's just days and weeks of meticulous planning or even a vacation. People spend so much time planning, but to the thought of taking one day, only one day, and planning your life is really all it takes. And so what we advocate, and we take you step by step through the process in the book. We tell you how to prepare for it. We tell you how to get the most out of it and optimize your time. But it's a process where you, if you'll follow the plan that we give you, you'll come out at the end of that day, even if you don't think you're, you're a writer or you don't have clarity or you don't know where you're going, if you'll spend the time going through the process, at the end of the day, you'll have a pretty good draft of your first life plan, and it'll make a huge difference in your life. Yeah, I think for me, the thing that a lot of people will object to is, well, I don't know if I can get a whole day away. Well, you can pull a sick day. You can pull a vacation day. You can even negotiate with your wife to take the Saturday and then give her the following Saturday. Totally. It's, it's an investment. It is in a truly important investment that I think we overlook how truly valuable it is. Well, especially if you think of it this way, Eric, if you think, okay, if I could give you clarity about your life, where it's all going 
and what you really want, if I could give you the courage to say no to the things that don't matter and yes to the things that do and give you a filter for the opportunities and the challenges that come your way, and if I could give you a sense of control, that you're not out of control, that you're not overwhelmed, that things aren't careening to these destinations you wouldn't chose. If I could give you that to you, and all I'm asking you to do is invest one day, I think that's a pretty small price to pay. It's a very small price to pay. And again, if if you're willing to give that day, you get so much more out of it. And you then have something that you can return to because not only then you, do you have the plan, you guys have this nice cycle of checking in with the plan and the implementation of the plan, right? Yes, we do. The, the last third of the book is that very thing. You know, How do you make this come alive and how do you actually execute on the plan and how do you keep it alive in your heart and in your life? Well, I want everybody to go grab this, go read it on that day and get their plan done. So let's tell them where to go get it. Yeah, well, you can get it at any retailer, you know, Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, iBooks, whatever. Here's the cool thing. If people get it before March the 1st, pre-order it, they can get also $360 worth of free bonuses. For example, you get a free copy of the audiobook, admission to the live online launch event on March the 1st. We're also recording that, so if you can't attend, we'll give you the video to that. A detailed action plan guide the Living Forward Quick Start audio training, and then a complete library of life planning templates. So we have the templates in Microsoft Word. We have them in iWork Pages, Evernote, and Workflowy. So yeah, all that, if you just pre-ordered it and you come back to the website, livingforwardbook.com, and you enter in your receipt number, and boom, you'll get the bonuses sent to you automatically. Awesome. One other cool thing I want to tell everybody real quick is you guys have been doing your live podcast on Blab. How do they find you there? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I know I know what it is. I can I can okay, tell good. you. Um, it's going to be your Twitter. So it's going to be Blab, it's B-L-A-B dot I-M slash Michael Hyatt. Yes, thank you. That's and, where you'll schedule them all. Yeah, and Michelle and I record those on Monday afternoon usually, and then they get uh, mixed and put into iTunes a couple weeks later. But if you want the live one, here's the cool thing too we're doing is we do the regular show for half an hour and then we take questions, which aren't part of the podcast, for another 15 to 20 minutes. As long as people want to talk, we're kind of there to answer questions. Yeah, delivering value. Doing our best. Awesome. Michael, it's been awesome to talk with you again. And actually, I'm looking forward to seeing you in a few weeks out in San Diego. So <laughs> Great. I look forward to that too, Eric. That'll be fun to be together. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for being here again. Thank you. Always a delight. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation. I know that you probably listen to a lot of podcasts and you think, wow, this person has just been on all my favorite podcasts that I listen to. But I absolutely had to have Michael back on this show because, again, this book that he just came out with really embodies what I view as the mission statement of this podcast, which is to get behind the productivity, which is to look deeper as well as from a higher level at the same time. I know that's kind of hard to imagine or envision, but getting out of the weeds of the everyday tasks and looking at it from the 30,000 foot view so that you can look then down back at those tasks and reevaluate, have a perspective and a decision-making rubric to say yes or no to the right things and then do the right things and organize yourself better to do them. You got to grab the book. I don't have an affiliate code or anything for this. I'm just telling you, go to livingforwardbook.com before March 1st, especially, to grab all the pre-order bonuses Michael talked about. You really owe it to yourself to do that, I'm telling you. You'll be glad that you did. You also owe it to yourself to get your task management system in place to achieve that higher level of productivity that your life plan is going to get you. Make sure to go over to nosby.com slash to do. That's N-O-Z-B-E dot com slash T-O-D-O. Grab that free 30-day pro trial of Nosby for you and a partner and get your tasks in order and organized moving forward. Thanks again to Nosby for supporting this episode of Beyond the To-Do List. Thanks again to you, the listener, for listening. I hope you found value in this episode. I know that I did. If you did, Head on over to iTunes and leave a rating or a review for the show. Let me know how I'm doing. You can find that at beyondthetodolist.com slash iTunes. Thanks again for listening. I'll see you next episode.
Beyond the To-Do List is a proud member of the Noodle Mix Network. Find more of our award-winning and award-nominated podcasts to make you think, laugh, and succeed at noodle.mx.